Well, my name is Stefan Thelen. It's um, actually a, it's a German name, Thelen. My parents were German, but they immigrated to the United States in, uh, f in the 50s. And I was born there in Santa Rosa, California. And we lived there for about 10 years until we went back to Europe. And since then, I've been living in Switzerland and at the moment in Zurich. Well, that was in the 70s. And I remember I, I listened to a lot of the Be uh, Beatles. And um, later on, I turned like more to uh, British progressive music, like King Crimson or Yes. Or, but King Crimson was my favorite band, definitely. And um, through them, I eventually went to classical music. And there I really loved uh, Bartok, for instance, also the especially the string quartets of Bartok. And what, I also, what also was a very uh, important influence was uh, minimal music. Steve Reich, Phil Glass, Terry Riley. That also was uh, something I listened to very often. Yes, um, I started with piano when I was very young, but I never really stuck with that and tried other instruments as well. I remember played trumpet for a while, and um, but when I was 13 I started playing guitar. I had a friend who played guitar, he taught me a few things, and that's the instrument I, I stuck with. So now I play electric guitar. That's my favorite instrument. Uh, very early. I remember I I, um, I always wanted to compose. I, I, when I played other people's pieces, I always, always wanted to change notes the way I heard them. So I thought the best thing would do just to do my own composition. So I've been composing all my life, basically. When I remember back when I was a little kid, uh, the, the things that I really liked to do were, we went to the beach on, on the weekend, to Bodega Bay from Santa Rosa. And I remember just sitting for hours at the beach, just looking around, listening to the seagulls and listening to the waves. And um, I really, that was a really a big influence, these, these sounds that I heard. I, keep, I also keep thinking about them now. So in a way, that, that experience really, really uh, was my first musical experience. I don't remember the, the first time really, but I remember the, the Bartok quartets, that they really made a, a strong impression, especially the fourth one, which is very rhythmical and very, um, it, it's based on, on very, uh, one, basically on one idea. And the whole piece is just variations of that idea. And, and that piece really, really changed my life. So um, that's the really the first strong memory I have of a string quartet. I think the, the way Bartok treats melody sometimes, he, he groups them in four, like four, um, how do you say in English? Four, um, you know, four, four phrases, yeah, four phrases. And it's like a first phrase and the second phrase is a variation and then it'll eventually come back uh, to the first phrase via the fourth one. So the way he groups these, his melodies, that, that was a big influence always. And, and if you listen to circular lines, you'll, you'll see that uh, phrasing in four groups a lot. So I think that's, that's a Bartok influence. Yes, I remember that because a friend of mine um, told me I have to listen to this. It was a Jimi Hendrix song played by Kronos. And he, uh, he really told me I have to listen to this. It was uh, um, Purple Haze, I think, yeah. And uh, that, that was the first time I heard Kronos. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it uh, really had spirit the way it was done. And it really sh uh, opened my interest for string quartet too, because it's string quartet, you can really do everything, really, any kind of music. And I mean, even Jimi Hendrix, you can play on the string quartet and it sounds authentic. So that's, that's really what I thought first time I heard that. I think David heard a, a demo recording of one of my quartets. And I think what he liked about it was uh, two things. One was it was very propulsive. It was very rhythmical. And he, I think he liked that a lot. And the other thing he liked was that it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it, the harmonic movement was, was according to the circle of fifths. Actually, it was the other way around. It was the circle of fourths. So it starts in a certain key and then moves down a fourth until it returns. In the end, it returns back to the original key. 
And I think he wanted something, I mean, because in string quartets, the, the intonation is very difficult. He wanted a piece in, in all tonalities. So that's, I think, what attracted to him, what attracted him to the piece as well. So we talked about that, and he, he wanted me to write a new piece, but with that same idea, with the harmonic movement, and automatically I also wanted to do something rhythmical, because my music is, is very rhythmical, very poly, polyrhythmical, so uh, that's what I wanted to do, and that's we, what we agreed on. I was always attracted to mathematics as well as music. And of course, I just liked uh, the structures that, that, that you, you can find in mathematics and the way you can deal with them and find things out. And that's, um, that's always been an influence in music as well. So as, if I think about music, I always also think about numbers in some, some kind of a way. All that, although that's only one part of, of what music is for me. I mean, the, the, if you were a composer, you, I think there's no way that you cannot use mathematics in your work. You have to think about these things. You have to think about structures and numbers and how you group things and how, how many repetitions you have of this. And, and, and so there's no way around mathematics, I think. So it helps if you know a few things about it. So that's, um, I think that, that's the way the mathematics works into music. Of course, then, if you're playing music, then I don't really think about math at all. I think music shouldn't sound mathematic, it should, should sound spontaneous. But like I said, it, it has to, there, there is no way you can avoid it in the composition process. If I write for string quartet, I'm always thinking about these four voices, like it's a, it's um, a conversation between four people for me in a certain way, and then um, it's a, like a big discussion where somebody says something, then somebody answers, and then they all talk together, and then it's just the, 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 all the possibilities you have for, with four voices going on in that, in that spe specific um, uh, way to play, the, the way the string quartet plays together. So um, I'm always thinking about these four voices which interact and in, in my piece it's, um, it's, a, it's a little bit special that um, the piece is based on a, on a polyrhythm where you have three rhythms going on and usually one instrument will play one of the rhythms. So you have three instruments playing the rhythmic part and the fourth instrument can play either a melody on top or maybe play with one of the other voices. So it's, it's in this specific quartet, it's, um, it's always this group of three people playing the rhythm and one, one person playing the wild card, playing the melody or what else is needed in the piece. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the basic rhythm of the piece. And that's a three against four against five polyrhythm. And I think the, um, the feel of the piece is in four, so that my foot will be tapping four. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then in my right hand, I'll be playing the, um, the threes. And in my left hand, I'll be playing the fives. So in the, in the, um, in the right hand, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And here it's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So it, together, it's... Now together again. So that was 60 beats going on. But of course you have three different instruments playing each, each rhythm. So that's really a challenge to get that uh, grooving. Well, in, in my quartet, um, like I said before, the, the, the basic rhythm is um, if you have a three against a four against a five. So one instrument is playing in three, the other one is in four, and the, and the third one is in five. So if you, if you um, look at these numbers and you see where they meet eventually, you'll, you'll go up to 60. So after 60 beats, they will start to repeat again. So um, I thought, if, thought about uh, notating the piece in 68, but that's not really <laughs> too helpful. So I eventually decided to, to do it in 15-4 because it's important that you have the, the quarter beat going on. You have to, that's really the, the basic uh, pulse of the piece. You have to feel that. Even if it's not played, you have to feel the quarter note going on. So that's why I decided to write in, 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 in four, 
well, in, in, in 15 4 in this case, because um, 15, of course, if you multiply, if you play it four times, you get these 60 word with their repeats. But there are places in the piece where, where one instrument will not land on the, on the beginning of a bar because, um, because his individual cycle is not a multiple of the, of the, the, the time signature. So that's why it's basically in 15. The last part of the piece is in 4-4 four, four, because that's kind of it's like the coda of the piece. It, it changes the mood as well. And um, it, it's like a simple ending for, for the piece, which uh, returns to the basic, basic ideas in a simple way, in a, in a more... Of course, the, the polyrhythms are still going on, but it's more of a 4-4 four, four feeling in that piece, in that part of the piece. When I was young, I, I remember thinking that um, our music that we listen to in the West is, is very rhythmically simple. I mean, it's always 4-4 four, four or 3-4, and it's, it's uh, if you listen to other cultures, Indian music, for instance, there's so many, so much more uh, variety in the rhythms. And I also very, easy, uh, very early found out that I, I like um, odd meters, like fives or sevens or elevens or nines. And um, so I like, what I like about them is that the syncopation that's, 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 that you have inside of these rhythms. So it's not monotonous, it's not, you know, just but it's like it's much more, uh, it's, it's much more alive for me. I, I, I like this kind of um, um, feeling that you get if you, if you listen to syncopated music. So I always wanted, I always liked that and I always, many of my pieces are, are in odd meters. And then eventually I also um, tried combining rhythms, like combining a three and a five together. And also I heard that in other people's work. So that really um, was a path I wanted to go along, you know, playing uh, different, mainly odd meters and uh, more, more than one playing to get to two or three or four even. And I found that that makes music much more interesting for me. And um, I, think, I think also that's something that, that, um, that Western music still has to discover, this, this rhythmic variety that you can have. I mean, we, we are so, uh, um, we have such a fantastic body of work in the West, but if you, if you look at the rhythmic side, there's, there's not really much variation. There's, there's, uh, there's all, usually just one rhythm going on, and the, most of the instruments are phrasing in that rhythm. But you can do so much more if you have um, really different, uh, different types of rhythms going on and people you know, playing them. And, and also, of course, what's important is that it really grooves. Like the rhythm, rhythms have to, have to make you, you want to move. You have to, has to have, um, you have to want to dance or, or move your body in some way. Otherwise, the rhythms aren't really organic, I think. Where ideas come from, I don't really know. That's a, a very mystical process. For me, often it's, um, if I, I'm thinking about, you know, I can think about numbers or the way numbers uh, interact together and um, just having an idea which can be also very geometric or, or, or um, structural. And the way I know that it's gonna work is as if you have an idea which you automatically have very many variations we, that you can do with it. You can play with this rhythm, you can, you can look at it from different aspects, and then you just, I just know that this will work or not. I mean, a lot of things don't work. I, I try them out and they just don't, don't work, so I just forget about them. But you do know as soon as you see there's potential. There's an idea which has a lot of potential. And then the fun thing is then working these things out, all the variations, and what, you, what can you, you can do with this one idea. That's when I know that it's really uh, going to work. Um, for me, minimalism has always been about, you know, there's the phrase, less is more. So it's been about how can you, you, how can you do the most with, one, with, with a minimal amount of, 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 th of things. So if you have maybe just one idea, it can be a very simple rhythmic idea, how could you build an entire piece on that one idea? 
an, an interesting piece. I mean, uh, how can you do variations on that one idea which still keep the interest of the, of the listener? That's, that what, that's what minimalism is about for me, doing as much as you can with as little as possible. Because sometimes I often feel that um, in Western music, there just one piece has too many ideas. Like they, they, they throw one idea at you, then the next idea, and, and it's just, uh, it's more than you need. I, need. I think for me, it's much more interesting to think, to see how somebody uses one idea and makes the most of it. And, and uh, that's, that's what I've always loved about minimalism. It, it really sticks to the basics and, uh, and tries to make the most out of these uh, ideas. I think what's um, important to me for, for, to convey to young musicians is that um, the, the rhythmic thing I was talking about, that the, the polyrhythmic things going on that, that should really groove, that, that makes your body want to move, this, this rhythmic element which, which is really not so well represented in Western music, which I think has a lot of potential, which can in the future will probably be a lot more complex type of rhythms as they are, as they have been for years in other cultures. But in the West, I think we're still learning a lot about those things. So I would, I would hope that young musicians would learn a lot about rhythms, could play them uh, with, with, um, yeah, with this type of groove feeling that, that something's really going on, which, which make, gives you a lot of energy, which uh, has a lot of physical power. This, this kind of uh, rhythmic, element is something I, I think is very important. Well, this band I play in, the Sonar, is, um, is a very unique band. It's, um, it's a band we, we started with a, with a very bold idea, actually, because I was, I was playing music for very, for very many years, and um, I, I, I just wanted to do something different. And I was a little bit fed up of other things, of always doing the same things again and again. So I, I really thought hard about what could we do which is really different. So um, uh, um, Bernard, he's the, the other guitarist in the band, we sat together and tr really tried to find things out which were kind of new. And the, one of the ideas we had is to retune the instrument. So we retuned the guitar to tritones. And um, first we thought, this is a crazy idea, you can't play a whole evening in tritones, but somehow it, it worked. And we found a lot of things out which are really, really unique about the tuning, especially the harmonics and so on. So that was just one decision. We'll just work with that tuning and also the bass is, turned, is tuned into tritones. So um, that, was, that was one decision. And the other decision was to work with polyrhythms as well and not use any typical 4-4 kind of beats. And um, also the minimalistic idea that we wanted to uh, have very, to do the most we can with, with, with little material. So we looked for a bass player and a drummer. And I knew a bass player from another band I was playing in and Bernard knew a, a drummer. So we got together and it was perfect from the first rehearsal. So we, it's, it was clear that we four could work together and um, it was really a magical experience in the beginning because the, the music just emerged and we all knew it was something unique. And um, first of all, first we weren't quite sure if it had that much potential for, you know, for a band which really existed for years and years. But um, when we went on, we found we keep, kept getting new ideas. So it's evolved very steadily and we're still uh, composing and still doing music, so it, it seems to work very well. I think the most important thing in the piece is that it's played with a lot of energy. It has to be really a physical piece and it, uh, an emotional piece, although it's the, there's a lot of ideas behind the music, there's a lot of math going on, a lot of numbers, um, play, uh, playfulness with, with numbers, but the feeling if you, when you play it should be really energy and propulsiveness and, and groove and emotional response. So, I think that's, that's really the main aspect of the, of the piece. Um, but for that, it's important that the, the rhythms really interlock. So they have to, um, although th three instruments are playing, each instrument plays a different rhythm. When, when three of the instruments are playing the rhythm, while the fourth one plays a melody, for instance, these rhythms really have to interlock. 
And um, for that, it's important, I think, that um, you have to be able to play these rhythms like a machine. I mean, I'm not saying that you should play them like a machine in, in a performance, but you should be able to play them like a machine. And then, if you're, if you're really uh, steady about, uh, with them, then you can try to, to try your own um, interpretation and give, and give them some artistic freedom. But I think it's important that maybe you could even rehearse with a metronome where you really get the, the rhythms exactly right. But it's a very uh, difficult thing to do and it takes a lot of time until it really, it really interlocks and grooves. So, but it's something you have to practice a lot. I think it's best practice with other people. Of course, you can play yourself, you can play polyrhythms with one hand and plays one rhythm, the other hand plays the other, which I find very useful. I mean, uh, practicing three against five or five against seven with your hands or feet can be, can be very useful, I think. But as soon as one, if you only play one of, these, um, one of these rhythms yourself while another person plays another one, then you really learn about the specifics of this polyrhythm that you're playing.